We have made several videos comparing many 2D software, and finally, we have got to talking about OpenTunes and Moho and comparing them. These two animation software are quite popular, so as an animator, you might be stuck on which one you should choose to work on your projects or invest your time in learning, especially if you're looking to become a professional animator in the future. So come with us and take a deep but swift dive into these two software to get an idea on how they function and hopefully be able to choose one that fits you and benefits you the most. But first, here's a question. Have you ever wanted to delve into animation? If your answer is yes, then you're in luck today, because in today's Domestica course, Character Rigging and Animation, you'll learn how to breathe life into your character using Moho. So follow along as Mauricio Esparza, who's an industry veteran with more than 20 years of experience, will teach you how to rig and animate your characters using the powerful tools of Moho. Mauricio is a graphic designer, animator, and director. He worked on so many projects throughout his career, and he now leads as the director in his animation studio, Polirama. In this course, you'll be first learning the standard structure of rigging, and the hierarchy between bones. You will learn Moho interface and how to use it to rig and animate your character. At the end, you'll bring everything to After Effects to add background and make the final touches. And as always, you can benefit from 10% off at checkout using our code. Links in the description. Let's first of all give you a general overview of the two software. Let's start with OpenTunes. If you're in the animation space, you have probably heard the name of this software being linked to Ghibli Studios, like something something Ghibli uses the software. Well, you are not, or whoever told you that, is not entirely wrong. Originally Toons, the software was used by Ghibli and many other studios to create animations for movies and even shows. Anastasia, Spirited Away, Steven Universe, to mention a few. What Ghibli did is customize the software to fit what the studio needed and used it. Fortunately for everyone, the source code for it was released, and thus it became an open source software. Hence, the name changed from Tunes to Open Tunes. Nice name. When you have a track record like that as a software, you will be hard to ignore. Now, let's talk about Moho. Moho is a 2D vector animation software developed and distributed by Lost Marble. Unlike OpenTunes, Moho is not an open source software, so the source code is not available and it's not a free software. However, it comes in two separate versions, one called Moho Pro and the other Moho Debut. The first costs around $400. The software is, as the name perfectly denotes, a professional and full version of the software. It has everything and anything an animator could need for their project. The second one, Moho Debut, is a less expensive version, costing about $60. It's the limited version of the software, being suited for beginner and intermediate animators who do not wish to invest much. It can even work for hobbyists who animate just for fun. OpenTunes has quite the odd interface. Most prominently, the timeline for the software is placed by default on the right side. And not only that, but it's presented vertically. If you're an animation software veteran, this can throw you off, as it's not traditionally the way the timeline is placed and presented to the user. That was the case up until the 1.5 release, and then it was switched to a more traditional timeline. You have your drawing tools on the left, as usual, and other options like the color selector on the right, next to the timeline. Another thing about the software's interface is that there are different layouts you can choose from, such as drawing, animation, and palette. Moho, on the other hand, wins over OpenTunes in the interface, as it has the timeline in the bottom, color selector, layers, and layer options on the right, and drawing tools on the left, and canvas in the middle which is not only reminiscent of other animation software, but also 2D art software in general. 
Moho is made in a way that is a lot more user-friendly than OpenTunes is. However, it can be argued that since OpenTunes is not only customizable and can be changed, but also the fact that the recent version is a lot more traditional in terms of interface. Well, yeah, the two can be equal in this aspect, especially since OpenTunes is open source, plus free, and thus used a lot more, and has many tutorials that can help you navigate it and customize it to your liking and ease. Okay, now to the most important part of the software, the animation and drawing tools, and their workflow. Let's start with OpenTunes. When you first open the software, one peculiar thing about it is that it works with projects. So that if you are working on multiple animations, they will be saved under separate project labels. The default project is Sandbox, and it's basically used for you to try things and experiment. The software has a variety of brushes and raster, a lot of which resemble Krita and Photoshop's. A good old trusty text tool, color selector, vector or raster options, shape and line editors, onion skin, rigging tools, and so on. OpenTunes works in an interesting way. It separates your raster and vector options in what it calls levels. You'll not be able to draw with vector and then immediately draw in raster. You would have to change the raster level. This applies to the brushes you can use. For example, when you pick a certain brush for your drawings on a vector level and then want to switch to the raster level, you would have to use the other brushes made for raster. Another option in OpenTunes is the keyframe tool which allows for a quick creation of several frames. This can be super helpful in speeding up your animation process. In addition to effect nodes, interpolation, and effect schematics, OpenTunes has an endless sea of animation tools, pretty much anything you would need as an animator, and then some. The general consensus is that this software has every tool you'll need, and even tools you would be paying thousands for. But it's all free, and the catch is, you'll need tutorials to be able to figure everything out and find your footing. If you think about the fact that this software is custom made and used by Ghibli for one of the most legendary animation movies, well, the deal is pretty sweet. Now that we have given you an overview of the workflow of OpenTunes, let's now talk about Moho. Since Moho W is limited in comparison to Moho Pro, let's talk about the latter for a better overview of the tools that this software has. The software has a variety of brushes, and you can even make custom ones. It has shape editor or shape tools, color selectors, layers, gradient tool, and the camera tool, among many other tools. Basically, all 2D animation tools, rigging, onion skinning, and so on and so forth. Moho has the same characteristics we mentioned earlier in OpenTunes, but it's a lot more accessible and intuitive to use. One thing that OpenTunes doesn't have that Moho has is the motion graphics tool. Moho tends to lean into the vector side of things than OpenTunes, as the latter was made to adapt traditional animation and merge it with digital animation, where Moho has much more of a digital feel to it. Moho and OpenTunes aren't too different, however, Moho wins over OpenTunes in terms of interface, as right off the bat, Moho is set in a traditional layout. OpenTunes isn't completely drowned by this, as it had an update that made it look a lot more traditional. Since OpenTunes was custom made, it's easy for it to fall into the trap of, wow, this tool is amazing, but why was it hard to find and buried deep within the software? Because perhaps the mindset of making it was towards animators who were already familiar with the software and just needed more tools that were custom made for them, not with user interface and user experience in mind. This gives Moho the crown. As Moho is a paid software, the UI and UX has been well thought out and had the user in mind first and foremost. OpenTunes, on the other hand, has many tutorials that can help you. Moho too, you know, but just not as much as OpenTunes, as you know how people gravitate to using cost-free software more than ever.
Okay, this is the part where we tell you who wins, right? Wrong. There are no winners here, but rather you would have to decide for yourself depending on what you need, what you could afford, and other factors. If you are a beginner animator, you have two options. Either spend around $60 on a software that has all the tools, except for some options that are limited, where you can explore and work, a software that is extremely user-friendly and intuitive, and where you can also find beginner mode to ease you in the process. Or you can get yourself a free professional animation software with every tool in the book, but with a less intuitive and easy user interface and that you would be willing to put time and effort and many, many YouTube videos worth of time to learn and master. It really boils down to this. OpenTunes is free, in addition to being professional and powerful. However, it's not designed in a user-friendly way at all, and you'll have to find your footing yourself. Moho is super intuitive and easy to use, with a variety of modes to help you experience the software in a fun, non-daunting way. But it's behind a paywall of $60 or $400, depending on which version you get. With all of this being said, just know that for both software, you have tutorials left, right, and center on YouTube for you to learn from. We hope you liked our overview of the two software and that it shed enough light on them for you to make a well-informed decision on which you should start learning. Comment below if you think that we've missed something or if you have any other suggestions. Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.